Hi, this is Doris. Dell Tech Vision. Job cost variants can be confusing. This content is meant for those familiar with accounting and project cost terminology. Thanks for joining me today. So what are we going to cover? Understanding why job cost variants. There's a credit in my account 703. Am I in balance? How do I record my payroll? Where do I assign labor costs to an employee? And how is labor cost distributed to project reporting? There's a credit in my 703. Am I in balance? Understanding Delta Vision. It records timesheet labor costs to the project reports in general ledger when timesheets post. This allows users to see project progress in a timely manner on reports. When the timesheet is recorded, then posted, this is not a cash transaction. The poster records labor costs as set up in the employee record and system configuration. This is normally the debit side of the transaction and the credit side of the transaction is job cost variance. Typically, each employee is assigned an hourly or salary rate, in some cases a standard cost rate. Regardless, it is this rate that is used and multiplied and accordingly distributed to the project reports and expense accounts. Typically, there's a timing difference between the posting of the timesheets and the actual recording of gross payroll. Until the gross payroll is recorded, a credit resides in the account selected as job cost variance, usually the account 703 set up in the vision configuration. So how do I record my payroll and remove the job cost variance or offset the job cost variance? Payroll is recorded when paid and may not coincide with the posting of your timesheets. Payroll can be weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, or monthly. I would recommend recording payroll with at least two separate cash disbursement entries that net to the exact amount provided in the payroll service reports. Some Vision users import this entry from the payroll service. Other Vision users actually process payroll in Vision, and this entry takes place with the posting of the payroll. So it's taken care of. If I were to set up two entries, it would be one entry would be the gross payroll, the withholdings, and net cash, most often direct deposit, matching the payroll service log. My second entry would be the tax entry that distributes withholdings and employer match and costs for Social Security, Medicare, and unemployment taxes. This entry offset is to cash and should exactly match the payroll service log. If you're importing this entry, it would follow the same structure and you would tell your payroll service company. Is assigning labor costs to employees important? It is. The cost you assign to your employee in Vision Info Center has a direct impact on whether the variance account will accumulate a variance. The account assigned can differ from the payroll cost rate in Vision or your payroll service. In a perfect world, an hourly employee would be paid the same rate as their assigned cost. If payroll and timesheet posting occur in the same month with the same timing, there is no variance. Should an employee be salary, the scenario is more involved. Hours are work and costed to the project but not paid. This creates a credit for unpaid or never to paid costs in your job cost variance account. Some firms wish to average or recast the cost the employee's timesheet and vision, again bringing the variance to zero. And vision does do this. You can keep the variance in your expense account and treat this as a reduction of overhead. It's not a reduction of total cost, just of overhead. Government accounting can require you actually to redistribute your annual variance to recast your overhead. So other items that contribute to a variance, and this list is not all inclusive, uh, payroll bonus should be treated 
or reclassified or removed from your job cost variance account. That's going to create a debit, actually. Accrued payroll is needed. Should payroll be paid in the month following uh, uh, for the previous month? Pay raises are often retroactive, necessitating adjustment to posted timesheets. So here is an example of T accounts and how is labor cost distributed to project re reporting. So my following T accounts show a timesheet posting of one hour uh, uh, for regular uh, project and one hour for a overhead project at $100 an hour and would be recorded to both the project report and general ledger or expense accounts at the time of the um, timesheet posted. So you have here your debit side of the transaction, $100 to these various accounts, typically 601, 602, 603. And those are all required to have regular project numbers. And then your overhead uh, or promotional projects have indirect labor accounts for the same hour or 100 dollars for that hour worked. When that's posted, your offset is a $200 to job cost variance account. Now, it's really important to understand this theory. The effect of a timesheet posting is zero to the profit and loss, zero. There's no cost effect to your bottom line and your profit and loss. When the job cost variance is, is an expense account, and in most cases, um, it is. Uh, the recording of gross payroll to the job cost variance account actually creates the actual cost. So when you record your payroll to this side of the entry, it will um, then create that actual matching of gross payroll to your payroll registers. Um, so with that said, I've covered my topic for today. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for listening and certainly join me on other videos. Have a good day.